come as close as you can to your to your screen so you can see what I'm going to share. And I'm going to start with that one. Is let's get share screen. Bring in our friend share. And you're all familiar with him. So I'm going to bring him up a little bit. Going for the knees. And if anything you need to question, unmute yourself and talk to me so that we can, you might be asking questions somebody is thinking about and not asking it. Coming closer to the knees, I'm going to move him as close as we can. Okay. If I do what we usually do is put the muscles on. So all the muscles. There is your left leg, Sharon. Lots of muscles, lots of running capability. If I then put on top of that the skin, this is what we see. And we start to say, oh, something's going on on the inside and something on the outside. There are several muscles in here. We know them as quadriceps. So remove the skin. Remove the fascia. So if I just move us a little bit out of the way, I can then control how we see the fascia. Where are we? Hmm. Come on, you. Move to the side. Okay. Fascia, hide. And we start to see the muscles. Very clear. I'm just going to zoom him out, zoom him back in. We talk about quadricep muscles quite often. Yes. And they are the key to all of the common knee issues that we are hearing now. Unless you are involved in a fall or, a, or an accident of any sort, and there was actually a broken bone or anything like that, that would be a different matter. If it is a result of exercise, lack of exercise, the, muscle, the, the bone also goes wrong when there's no exercise. So this evening, we're going to work with that bit of awareness to do with the quadricep muscles. So I'm going to highlight the quads. One, I'll do... One at a time. So the vestus, I get rid of that. We got the rectus femoris, the large front muscle. This is the one that really guides. So I'm going to keep this one on and remove the other. So three and the four. Now, the main muscle doesn't connect with the bone. So muscle never connects with a bone. It starts with the tendon, becomes what we call the belly, i.e. the muscle structure itself, ends in tendons or in ligaments, whichever way. Tendons means end of the muscle joining up with the opposite bone so that it allows it to be to move whatever its function is. If you were to turn it around at the back, there are five muscles. So how do you bring your heel towards your back? That's another set of muscles coming into work. But this evening, here is the area where there is discussion, uh, starting with Sylvia. Let me just bring him in a bit more. Moving to the side. So that's the bicep femoris, the main muscle. It ends in as a tendon over the kneecap, over the kneecap. We'll see the kneecap in, in, in a little while. Be mindful, always being aware that at the top or between the tendon or the muscle, between the tendon and or the muscle, 
there is what we call a bursa. Bursa is a lubricating fluid sac. And these are constantly being replenished, being, being got rid of because of, of whatever you can see. If there was an injury, you had an argument with the side of a table, the bursa would take the impact. It may even split, but it repairs itself and fills up. So that is the lubricator between tendon and the bone, between muscle and the bone. Muscles will tear because the, the bones are not always smooth as they look in here. They are pitted, so muscle will tear if that was the case. So I'm going to get rid of the bursa. Then we go for the kneecap. This is the patella. And if I start to work around a little bit, there are the purple ones are all bursas. We pick up with Sharon first is this inner area of the of the kneecap, which is a ligament. And when that is either overused, so in your running, you may have stepped off, um, say, a curb with a little bit of inward movement. So knees coming towards each other. This, this area, this structure takes the stress. Lots of nerves through there. If you were to put nerves, you can see exactly what, is, what, what could have happened. So nerves could have trapped. If I remove that, going further down towards the inside, Sylvia, we're coming to you, what you had asked. So I'm going closer. This is the goal. Let's move that. So here above the thigh bone, the femur. Get rid of that. If I move him up a little bit, this is the tibial band the tibial muscle or the tibia, the two bones in the lower leg. So now move him up and down. We know where we are. I did, and highlight that between the two bones are the cartilages. So this is the outer one. This is the inner one. These are shock absorbers. So for the runners, Whichever distance you're doing, it doesn't matter. And the walkers, it is important that we start to learn to, to do the walking and the running in a lot more traditional way. The Africans, the South American runners and all of that, they always land on the ball of the foot before they land on the heel. Our Western runners are more used to. Yes, there's all kinds of cushioning in the shoes. They land on the heel and then onto the ball of the foot. So there is an impact. Now it's, you know, we've got our marathon runners, so then they compete against the Africans. They don't necessarily suffer that much, but they have to really take care of the kind of shoes, the kind of padding that the shoes have, so that these capsules don't have to take that much of an impact. So bone against bone, it's not touching. There is a cartilage in between, and it's literally doing that. It's moving up and down, moving up and down. Okay, working with what Sylvia has mentioned, and if I'm wrong, you just unmute and talk to me. The, base, the, the femur is coming down, ends up into the patella. So if I fade that one, we can almost see all the structure behind the thigh bone coming down, the tibia coming up, and there is the kneecap. It may not be as prominent. Let me just see if I can do a bit better. No, it will stay as a whole cap. I can't unhighlight. That's just the cushion between the thigh. So if I go back a little bit, how do I go back? This way. It is this area, Sylvia, 
that is under strain. So it is maybe right leg, maybe left leg. Again, the body is in balance. You may be right-handed, you may be left-handed. So you know the muscle structure and the weight of the body is not equal. If you were to on a balance, it might just be a little bit to the side. So the impact on the muscle then translates into the kneecap. What does that mean? Well, when you're running, initially you might have a little bit of pain and then it settles down. So the muscle has warmed up, it's stretched, ligament is stretched, and it's released some of the nerves. It's when you sit down and you try and get up after a while, as Sharon has just said, then, oh, what happened? Yes. So whether it is a muscle or a tendon, it is catching the nerves. That is, unless there has been a real physical damage with blood vessels splitting and all that, you are simply going through what could be seen as a temporary effect. But being mindful. Yeah. I mean, I do all kinds of things. I do my swings and all kinds of cycling and walking, walking long distance. If my foot or my knee complains, I just pack up a couple of days, put my feet up, take the medicine I get from Ann Walker and just relax. The pain goes and I carry on. Does that make sense, everybody? Marie comes up. Does it make sense? That applies to you in your wrists. Same thing. It's just nerves that are being trapped. You haven't put weight on it. You haven't opened it up as much as. And all of us can claim somewhere along the line, maybe a tennis elbow, whatever it is. It's the tendons and the muscles not doing what they are supposed to do. Okay, if we overuse the muscle in case of running or in case of playing tennis or in case of doing a lot of crocheting, it's really almost an RSI kind of movement. Okay, I don't see anybody asking any questions, so that's pretty good. You're giving me an ego. I must be that good that you don't even ask a question. <laughs> I'm going to stop the share and we're back into our full screen and move us up to the top again. Okay, we're going to be sitting up with cross legs, looking at our camera. And if you're cross legs, then use your thumbs just where you know your kneecap is. So it is like a dimple. There is a little dimple. If you don't do circular motions there, you are helping the cruciate ligaments. There is a ligament inside, and that normally tends to go wrong because stepping off e uneven surfaces, when the knees go towards each other, these inner cruciate ligaments tend to suffer the most or take the most strain. Most of the time, it's fine. You walk away. And there used to be things like, you know, oh, come on, walk it off, which is true. You can do that. But next day, it complains even more or maybe not so much, but it's there. Sitting cross legs, when you get a time now, this evening, put your thumbs into the dimple just on the inside of the kneecap. Your palms are covering the kneecap. So just rotate. And if you were to put a little bit of pressure on it, you will feel as if it's hollow underneath. That's the space between the thigh bone and the tibial bone, bone, the lower parts of the legs. It's tiny little bits, but as far as we are concerned, we work away with stretching, strength building, all our standing postures, all of that helps. Okay, Let's start with the neck and the shoulders. Sitting comfortably, this time backs of the wrists onto your knees, index fingers and the thumbs link up. 
Eyes begin to close, chin slightly tucked in. Next three or four breaths, connect with the ribs. One more round. And you gently open your eyes, your left ear towards the left shoulder. You're still looking straight ahead. Extend the left arm out, palm facing up. Bend at the elbow, place the palm. Familiar posture for most of you. Use a little bit of strength to guide the left ear closer to the left shoulder. Breathe. Belly area moving. And release. Come back up. Hand on the knee. Right ear drifting towards the right shoulder. Extend the right arm out, palm facing up, and bring the palm to place on the outside of the ear. Guide the right ear a little bit more. Left shoulder, if it's lifting up, let it glide down. Breathe. Allow the muscles, especially the mastoid, let it stretch. And release, come back, hand on each knee, tuck the chin into your chest. We do some rotations, so all the muscles in the neck. One of these days, we'll look at the neck and you see how complex that area is. Next time you breathe out, chin towards the left shoulder, chin towards the ceiling, keep it slow and steady. Chin to the right shoulder and to the chest. If eyes are closed, you'll be hearing some clicks in the neck. Continue. Shoulder. Ceiling. Shoulder. Chest. One more round. Shoulder. Ceiling, shoulder, chest. Change the direction. Keep eyes closed, nice and slow. Shoulder, ceiling, shoulder, chest. <coughs> Two more rounds in your own time. When you're done, come back to the center, eyes open, and we work the shoulders. Fingers in pyramids on tops of the shoulders. As you breathe out, drop the elbows, join them up at the front. As you breathe in, lift them up, lean back, look up, open the neck area as well. Rotate, come back down. Exhale, inhale, lift up, lean back a little bit, exhale, come back down, inhale, up, and come back, then you change the direction, inhale, down and up, exhale, Come down. Inhale. Exhale. Eyes closed. Inhale. 
feel the muscles in around the shoulders. And come back. Bring the elbows up, starting position. Your left elbow, let it drop, go forward. Up and back, up and back. Your left elbow, give it a good circle. Speed it up a little bit. Change the direction. Listen to the clicks. And then change the direction again. Slowing it down. The opposite elbow. Going in a, the opposite direction. So le right elbow going back. Left elbow coming forward. Why is he doing that? Well, this creates new neural pathways. Brain getting used to it. Change the direction. Speed it up a bit. And again, change direction. Speed it up. And let go. Breath in. Breath out. Good. We'll continue to move down the spine. So we start with that rising sun, which takes care of the rib cage, the thoracic spine and still stays with the shoulders. So in your own time, you're gonna lie down along your mat lengthways, and then you're gonna turn and stack the left hip on top of your right hip. And both the palms are stretched out in front of you and you're looking at your palms. So lie down, right hip goes on top of the left hip, Arms stretched out in front of you. Head is not resting on the, on the mat. It's off the mat. So the back of the neck is in line with the thoracic spine. Take a glance below and see if you can bring the thighs to be at 90 degrees to your upper body. Bring the knees up towards the palms. That's it. It's... Now... Looking at the palms, as you breathe in, take the right hand up towards the ceiling. Back of the head drops onto the mat. As you breathe out, back of the right palm goes to the floor in line with the right shoulder. Let it go. If it doesn't go onto the floor, fine. Just hold it where it is. Breathing in, bring it back up. Breathing out, join up the palms, make sure the head is off the mat, the neck in line with the thoracic spine. Breathing in, right hand up, back of the head on the mat, breathing out, back of the right hand on the floor, beyond your right shoulder. One more round, breathing in, come up, head comes up, breathing out, palms join up. Fingers are equal distances from the shoulders. One more round. Right hand lifts up. Back of the head onto the mat. And back of the right palm onto the floor, beyond the shoulder. Complete the round. Breathing in, come up. Head comes up. Breathing out. Palms join up. Head stays off the mat. Use your palms in front of you and flip over to the other side. <coughs> Making sure the, or at least the thighs are at right angle to the upper torso. So we're going to focus on the upper spine, thoracic and cervical. Palms out in front, head is off the mat. You're looking at the palms. Left arm lifts up as you breathe in. Back of the head goes to the mat. Keep it slow. As you breathe out, let the back of the left hand go and touch the floor. <coughs> Breathing in, come up. Head comes up. Breathing out, palms join up. Great. Breathing in, left hand up. Back of the head on the mat. And slowly the back of the palm to the floor. So shoulder joints, rib cage, thoracic spine. Breathing in, bring the arm up. 
Head up, breathing out, stretch the arms, join up the palms. One more, breathing in, arm goes up, back of the head on the mat. Exhale, back of the hand on the floor. Inhale, come up, lift the head, palms join up and you're looking at your palms. So the neck has worked. Good, from there, just lie down on your back, bend at the knees, plant your feet on the mat. And we address the muscles at the back. Another familiar posture, Satubanda, the bridge. So now we're going back to the knees. This is where what I mean by you listen to your body, your knees. If they don't like anything you're doing, you stop and release. Reach down, touch the backs of the heels, index finger or the middle finger touching the heels, feet are hip width apart. If you bring the toes a little bit towards each other, we call it pigeon toe, that protects that inner cruciate ligament. We saw that in the image. So when you have to put body weight on, of this type on the knees, make sure the pigeon toe stays. Now with the breath, as you breathe out, start to push the pubic bone up. Once you've gone as high as you're going to go, your palms are still on the mat. Eyes are slightly open, just breathe in and out and watch the belly button lifting as you breathe in. Belly button down as you breathe out. Push up the pubic bone a bit. You're listening to your knees. Anything not right, you come back down. Next exhalation. Start to roll the spine back down. When the hips are on the mat, bring both the knees to your chest. Arms around the tops of the shins. Forehead comes up towards the knees and reach out and grab hold of the outer edges of the feet. And then we use the muscles in the arms and the shoulder joint areas to bring the forehead. Some of you, your head is between the knees. And observe, where is the body weight? Strengthening the bones in the rib cage and the spine. Slide the palms back onto the shin. Let the head go back down and a couple of side to side rocking and visiting the muscles that are being massaged now. And we'll use them again. Come back to the center, release the shins, feet on the mat, reach down, touch the backs of the heels, Again, that little bit of pigeon toe. And then with the breath on an exhalation, push the pubic bone up, going as high as you can. If you're taking it further, interlace the fingers underneath. Palms facing towards your head. Now shuffle at the shoulders and bring the shoulder blades as close as you can. Belly button lifts. Belly button down. Little fingers are on the mat. If all is well, we use those quads we just looked at. Next time you breathe in, shoot your right leg up, right foot towards the ceiling. And then normal breaths. Push the heel, pull the toes in. Bring the right foot back down. Push the pubic bone up a little bit. Make sure the pigeon toe stays. And then the left leg, shoot it up, push the heels, push the toes towards the face. Come back down with the left foot, release the fingers, unshuffle at the shoulder blades. Let the spine walk down, hips on the mat, knees to the chest, palms on the shins. Forehead towards the kneecaps. Head goes back down 
and you rock from side to side. But this time, on one side, drop right down to the elbow. So the side of the rib cage <coughs> gets a bit of body weight. Coming back to the center, release the shins, plant your feet on the mat. In the right position for our supine twist. If you need to shuffle up or down, do that now. But when you're ready, arms wide in line with the shoulders, palms facing up. So now it's the digestive system, the lumbar spine, the muscle structure in and around the hips. Right foot on top of the left knee. Guiding the right knee away from your face. You know the right hip joint is now opening nicely. We take that rotation of the ball within that socket a little bit further. You start to bring your left knee towards your face and you know the figure of four is deepening now as the knee comes up you reach through the figure of four grab hold of the back of the thigh and then straighten out the leg push the heels pull the toes in next time you breathe out forehead comes up towards the inside of the right ankle. Some of you forehead touching the bone or as close as you can. Body weight now is on the sacroiliac joint, descending spine where it disappears into the hips. It's an extremely sensitive area. One of these days I'd like to look at that and, and discuss it a bit more. Let the head go back down, plant the left foot onto the mat, open the arms wide, the figure of four remains. On the next exhalation, both the knees towards the right elbow. Now go with eyes closed. Take your awareness to the left armpit. You know the muscles, the skin, the lymph nodules, all of that is stretching. And the outside left side of the rib cage. You know there are three layers of muscles crisscrossing each one between each rib. We maintain the flexibility and the strength of those muscles by the kind of things we do. Here, our awareness goes to the outside of the rib cage. That's enough. Go to the base of the rib cage. There you pick up the large descending intestine, base of the rib cage, all through the left side of the belly area, right through and quite close to the top of the left hip joint large descending intestine, just awareness. And then the right leg, straighten it out, take it all the way, or is it the left leg? Left leg, all the way to the right side of the mat. Some of you, the left toes touching the right fingers. That's it. That's the deep psoas iliacus muscles working. Little bit more with the toes. Paying attention to the knees, especially the three of you talked about it. If it's any discomfort, you ease up a bit. And bring the left foot back into the center of your mat. Continue to twist at the spine and take both the knees towards the left elbow. When the right foot is on the floor, reach with the left palm and begin to guide the knee towards the floor. And you know the right hip joint is benefiting from all of this. 
the back of the ball and socket joint of the hip is now completely open. Tendons and ligaments in that area, no muscles. Muscles come as we go to the glutes. But this is the ball and socket joint. Pull the knee down a little bit. Lumbar spine, all the five vertebrae are working with and against its neighbors. And you take your awareness to the right set of fingers. Open them wide. Keeping contact with the floor, begin to clock face that arm towards 12 o'clock. And we attend to the right armpit area. On an exhalation, right fingers. Push them away from the right shoulder a bit. Breathe. Is the belly area moving? If the diaphragm is working, the belly button will move up and down. And bring the right arm. Either stay in line with the right shoulder or go all the way down and find the front of the left foot. Once you've got the left foot, Focus back onto the shoulder blades. Allow them to go to the floor. And then at the cervical spine, the neck, turn and look to your side and straighten out the upper leg. The right leg straightens out. You support the back of the right knee. Your thumb is where we were looking. It's the cruciate ligaments, the inner one. The fingers are at the back of the knee joint. Now use the strength in the left arm to see if the toes will go a little bit further up towards line of sight. The entire muscle structure from the lumbar spine, through the glutes, through the backs of the legs and the, all the way to the heels. And let go, come back, keep the knees bent, plant your feet on the mat. Arms go wide in line with the shoulders. Eyes closed. Simply study right hip, left hip. Yes, compare. What happens when we stretch? And this is why I keep coming back to keep doing what you're doing whatever the exercise, but add yoga to see this kind of differences. The left hip is much tighter than the right hip now. All you've done is stretch the muscles. We do the other side, arms are wide, left foot on top of the right knee, guiding as usual, the knee away from your face, Right knee comes up towards your face. You reach, grab hold of the back of the right thigh and shoot the foot up towards the ceiling. The whole muscle structure around the right hip joint. Pushing the right heel, pulling the toes in. Forehead coming up towards the inside of the left ankle joint. And body weight, sacroiliac joint, tops of your hips, base of the spine. And let the head go back down, plant the right foot back onto the mat. Open the arms wide in line with the shoulders. And left elbow, as you breathe out, both the knees towards the left elbow. Using the weight of the left foot to guide the knee down. Right shoulder blade stays on, on the mat. <coughs> Eyes closed. Right armpit region. You know what's happening, but whenever you take your awareness, I know, I feel it, the energy follows. Muscles will release a little bit. Right side of the rib cage, the intercostal muscles, 
the right lung moving up, out, and in. From the base of the rib cage to the top of the right hip joint is the large ascending intestine. Breathe. The right leg, straighten it out. Take it all the way to the left. If there is furniture in the way or a wall, make use of it. Take the leg as far in line of sight as possible. Shoulder blades are on the mat. And you bring the right foot back to the center of your mat. <coughs> Keep the figure of four, arms wide in line with the shoulders. On the next exhalation, both the knees towards the right elbow. Twisting up the spine as you go down. Your left foot lands on the floor and use your right palm. Digestive system, the hip joints, and then take your awareness to the left set of fingers, open them wide, keep contact with the floor, and draw that hand up towards two o'clock, one o'clock, and 12. Upper arms touching the side, left side of your face. Fingers are wide open. Next time you breathe out, left fingers, push them away from the left shoulder. Breathe, belly moving. And start to bring the left arm either back in line with the left shoulder <coughs> or go down and find the front of your right foot. Then focus, bring the shoulder blades back onto the mat. Spine is nice and straight. Turn at the neck, look to your side and straighten out the upper leg. Support the back of the left knee with the palm. Elbow is also carrying a little bit of leg weight. So the bone there is starting to get a bit of bone loading. Push the heel away, pull the toes in, feel the Achilles tendon. Use the strength in the right arm to draw the toes that a little bit further. And let go, come back to the center, keep the knees bent, let your palms go by the side of your hips, palms facing up. Join the soles of the feet and let the knees drop to either side. main reason why I do the supine twist is for my hip joints. I know this particular posture really benefits the bones, the tendons, the ligaments, the cartilage, the lubrication. Good. Bring the knees towards each other. You can roll onto any one side, go towards the back of your mat and sit back, if possible, on the backs of your heels. Now, the reason why I say if possible is you're listening to your knees. Remember the quadricep muscle is, if you are sitting on your heels, it's stretched the most. That's pressing the kneecap onto the thigh bone and the tibial band, didn't, and the tibial uh, bone. If there's any pain here, 
come out of the posture, straighten out the leg. That would be the way to start to, if you're doing newly some exercise like park running, sit like this for a few minutes before you go for your run. You see runners standing there and with the heel coming up to the buttock, they're stretching the quads. Here, you're stretching the quads, but you do have an option to take it a little bit further in terms of stretch. Lean back, plant your palms on the mat. Fingers are pointing towards the knees. Now you can feel the bicep femoris is stretching a bit more. Bring the shoulder blades towards each other and lift your face and look up. Breathe. Tuck your chin in, stay leaning back, look at your knees. Now, no need to take it any further if it doesn't feel right, but you can start to lift the shins off the mat. Your head goes back a little bit more and the kneecap is in full squeeze underneath its tendon. Tuck your chin in, come back, spine upright, draw the hands up towards the ceiling, let the palms face towards your knees, and then start to fold forward, try and keep the bum onto the heels. So palms will land on the mat, belly will go onto the thighs, Chin tucked in, eyes closed. Creep the fingers a little bit further away from the knees. If there is a cramp, you go straight into down face dog. In fact, we're going to do that now. Slowly come up on all fours. Tuck your toes onto the mat. Have a look. Feet are hip width apart. And palms slightly further forward from your shoulders, palms slightly further forward, and then straighten out the legs. Allow the head to drop between the shoulders, feet hip width apart, pressing the heels towards the mat. You're looking at your knees. The knees are at ease at the moment. There is no stretch on them. Bend the right knee, press the left heel towards the mat. Bend the left knee, press the right heel towards the mat. And then allow both the heels to go towards the mat. Good. One knee at a time. Drop the knees to the mat. Fronts of the feet go on the mat. And once again, you sit on the backs of your heels. Lift the shoulders, roll them back. If your arms are long enough, use your thumbs to massage the arches of the feet. Now, some of you may be thinking a little bit more about how best to even increase the stretch on the quadricep muscles. I talk you through, and I know you're all very responsible yogis. You won't do it if it doesn't feel right. Let me just show you before you go into it. So my knees are together. My feet are hip width apart or more than hip width apart. And I'm going back using my fingers in pyramids, but I'm dropping my bum onto the mat. So try it out, come up onto your knees, knees close to each other, feet go more than hip width apart. And then you slowly go and sit down onto the mat with your feet either side. And you, you know, I don't need to tell you, you know how much stretch is happening. Now this would be another one if you're doing a long distance running, cycling, swimming, walking. Just sit a little bit like this. 
Some of you, you know this was coming. Some of you can take it a little bit further. But, yes, I know, you're listening to yourself. Hands on the feet, palm, thumbs in the, in the arches of the feet. You start to lean back, drop one elbow, and then the other elbow. Knees may start to come up. The, all four of the muscles in the right thigh, left thigh, eyes are closed. Let the shins remain on the mat. Look up towards the ceiling. Breathe into the stretch. If there is a cramp in the calf muscles, go into down face dog. Press down onto the elbows, palms on the mat. Come up, fingers in pyramids, push up, come onto the knees. Palms on the mat, toes tuck onto the mat, and into down face dog. So countering the stretch we put on the quadricep muscles and the hip flexors at the fronts of your hips. Let the crown of the head drop a little bit. And from there, walk the feet to the center of your mat, Walk the palms towards the feet. You're in the middle of your mat in a forward bend. Looking between the knees. Letting the head drop a bit. And then palms onto the shins. And you start to unwind till you come up. Head comes up last. And then fingers are wide, take the hands up towards the ceiling, palms facing the ceiling, you facing the ceiling. If all is well, a little bit of back bend. And join up the palms and bring the thumbs to the sternum. Breath in, breath out. Once again, a little bit more on that pigeon toe bit. So walk the legs as wide as you can. Hands are on the hips. Allow the elbows and shoulder blades to come towards each other. Looking at your feet, either you push the heels away from each other or bring the toes towards each other. First thing you observe is that the arches of the feet are active. That's exactly what you want to protect the knees, arches of the feet active. As you breathe out, you start to rotate forward. Parsarita Padottasanya, wide legs, forward bend. Slowly going down, chin tucked in, eyes are open. Check that you can see the arches of the feet. And if you are your clothing is right, you'll probably see the cruciate, inner cruciate ligament active. Drop the hands to the mat or onto your shins. Depends how far you can go with your body. Bending the elbows a little bit, guiding the crown of the head towards the mat. Not bending at the knees. Knees are just slight hollow in the back of the knee. Let the whole of the posterior chain muscles work. Breathe. Look at the mat. Move the hands to be directly underneath, in line with your eyes. Bring the heels towards each other by a good couple of inches. Hands go onto your tops of your knees. Dig your fingers in there. And then start to lift the torso up. Your knees are still bent as if in a sumo wrestler posture. And then straighten out the legs and feel the muscles at the top of the kneecaps. These are your quads working. Torso comes upright. Toes. 
heels, toes, heels, till the feet are hip width apart, hands by the side of your hips, and your feet hip width apart. You can check that. Okay, we work the front and the back muscles. Yes, the leg muscles will work, you know they will. So this is our version of the Utkatasanya. We've got two levels of it. You all know the posture, but hopefully you're doing it as regularly as you can. Turn to any one side, so you've got the shortage of the mat in front of you. You're in the middle of your mat. Walk the feet towards the edges of your mat. Make sure they are parallel to the edges of the mat. That way your cruciate ligaments will be well protected and the arches are active. Stretch the arms forward in line with the shoulders. Fingers are wide. Next time you breathe out, push your bum towards the wall behind you. Tuck your chin in, look at your toes. And now you look at your knees. They are directly above the heels. Sitting on an imaginary chair, you need to bend a little bit at the knees. Drop the bum onto the chair. Push the knees back over the heels till you feel the glutes engage. And then look up between the palms. Push the hands forward. Drop the bum down a bit. Push the knees back. Stretch the arms forward. And slowly release, come back up, bring the feet hip width apart. Lift the shoulders, roll them back. Couple of breaths, you can tell from your breathing, a lot of energy being used. Stretch the hands up towards the ceiling, palms facing in. Push your bum towards the wall behind you. Your arms remain as high as you can. Look at your toes. This time deliberately, tops of the knees are bending. And knees stay over the heels, bumps <clears throat> dropping onto a high chair and you lift your face and arms up to the ceiling. Drop the bum down, push the knees back, and lift your hands up, and let go. Come upright. And take a water break. That's enough for the physicality this evening. We're going to go into pranayama. So put your warm things on, get a water break, come and sit comfortably. your warm things around you will be going into relaxation after the pranayama. As we transition from the physicality into a little bit more esoteric, just take time. Backs of the wrists, index fingers and the thumbs, eyes closed, chin slightly tucked in. An awareness, entire body weight on the sitting bones and the outer edges of your feet. Spine is as upright as it's going to be. Breathe. This evening, we're going to stay with the Bamari breath, making the sound of the bee. Remembering everybody has different lengths of breath. 
So when we do, we're only going to do four rounds. When we do our rounds, you go right to the end, fill up and repeat. Now the objective is as much vibration as possible above the voice box, but at the back of the nostrils. That kind of vibration helps what is understood as the body's ability to generate nitrous oxide at the top of the septum. Nitrous oxide helps blood pressure. We all start together. Exhale fully. Pull in the belly muscles, start to empty the lungs as much as you can. Exhale, exhale, exhale. Inhale right to the top. And the sound as you breathe out. One more round. And back to normal breaths. Good. Gently open your eyes and give yourself that time. Five, seven minutes of complete relaxation. Lying down, covering yourselves up if you've got your blankets around you. Paying attention to the lower back any discomfort anywhere in the body, keep the knees bent, feet on the mat, anywhere in the body, doesn't feel right, ease the posture. If all is well, stretch the legs out, allow the feet to flop a bit to the side and allow the palms slightly away from your hips to face up. And you observe how the fronts of your shoulder joints, which have worked well today, how they roll away from each other. Opening the Anahata Chakra, the heart energy region. Eyes are closed. Behind closed eyelids, begin to gaze at the tip of your nose. And then go into the nostrils. Just observing, making note, both the nostrils are open and working. That's telling you energetic balance in the brain as well as the body. From the nostrils, allow your awareness to go to your kneecaps, right and left. Stay on any one of the kneecaps, left or right. 
begin to feel the warmth in and around the kneecap. into the inside of the kneecap, inside. Cruciate, inner cruciate ligament. Doesn't matter what its shape looks like, you know there is a structure there. Take your awareness to the other side of the kneecap, outside of the knee the external cruciate ligament. Keeps the whole knee structure in good balance. Come up to where you know your quadriceps are underneath the skin, fronts of your thighs. Bicep femoris, the middle one, we know that's the one that when not used as well as it could be, i.e. stretched, it does affect the kneecap. You know as yogis, ways of stretching the quadricep muscles. and maintain the condition of your knees. You only begin to pay attention to them when things go wrong. Try to pay attention before anything goes wrong. Come up to the hip joints, right and left. You know the amount of work that's gone on there, not just at the bone level, ball and the socket, but the quads at the fronts of the thighs, the upper hamstrings, backs of the thighs. Front of the thigh, you know, there are four. That's why we call them quadriceps. At the back of the thigh, there are five very prominent muscles. We'll have a look at them someday. The front and the back work well. You're walking, you're running, you're cycling. Will all go well. With occasional issues. By now, we all understand the digestive system. The ileum, the small intestines, large ascending intestine, right hip joint, right through to the base of the right side of the rib cage. And then across the base of the rib cage, the transverse large intestine. Just follow it with your awareness. And then a 90 degree kink and the descending large intestine. Once you get to the base of the descending large intestine, close to the left hip joint, you observe the structure there. My wish is that you look up next opportunity you get is the sigmoid colon. S-I-G-M-O-I-D, C-O-L-O-N, look it up. It's the one area in our Western society where the bowel cancers are the worst. What we do with our postures and the way we move, especially the supine twist, there is nothing static in that area.
go to the lumbar spine, five vertebrae, just knowing you've rotated them with and against their neighbors. We did a lot for the thoracic spine and the rib cage with our rising sun posture. Neck, you've all got to know it as you have the maximum range of flexibility in the cervical spine. One of these days, we're going to start with looking at the cervical spine and the neck in particular and observing such a complex structure we take for granted. Good. Keeping your eyes closed. Slowly roll your head to any one side and take as close to the mat as possible that ear. If it's touching, you've got a great movement, but observe the shaking of the muscles in and around the neck. Slowly rotate at the cervical spine guide the other ear to or near the mat. And come back to the center. Gently blink open your eyes. Start to bring your knees to your chest arms around the tops of your shins and as you breathe out bring the forehead up towards the knees forehead touching the kneecaps is really the objective because then you know the body weight is on the thoracic lumbar spine junction where the shapes and the size of the vertebrae begin to change bone loading strengthening Keep hold of the shins, let the head go back down. <coughs> and then rock from side to side. Awareness to the muscles that are being massaged now. And that rocking from side to side you know it's working the kidneys and the adrenal glands. You're getting them some attention. Three, four rounds. Be generous with this kind of massage. Good. When it's enough, you come back to the center. Release your shins. Plant your feet on the mat. And then in your own time, roll to any one side and come up in a sitting posture. Unmute if you wish to have a bit of a chat, which would be good. Hi, Magda. Hello, Amy. You're there. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. You're welcome. I oh. did notice when we were doing um, the back, sitting on the back of the knee, the last one, my knee popped. It it made a, a pop, didn't it? But didn't in, there was no pain with it? No. No pain? Just a, yeah, you know, like when your ankle cracks and you yeah, know, you, you your fingers pop. Yeah, so that's not a bad thing at all but you now know that before you go for your runs just do some stretch of the quads that's not guaranteed that the knees if the knees don't like and i'm using sharon's comment we are maturing 